Hey guys, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back. This is part two of my naming compound series. Last week, we talked about naming ionic compounds. If you haven't seen that yet, I suggest you go watch that first. Today, we're going to be looking at naming molecular compounds. If you remember from the ionic compounds video, ionic compounds are usually made up of one metal and one nonmetal. Molecular compounds, on the other hand, are usually just made up of nonmetals. Many molecular compounds are also binary, so they're made of only two atoms. Some examples are HCl and HBr. HCl is called hydrogen chloride. This should sound familiar to you because this is the same way that ionic compounds are named. You write the name of the first element and the name of the second element with the ending changed to IDE. HBr would be hydrogen bromide. Sometimes the same pair of elements can form several compounds. In that case, a prefix has to be added to clarify how many atoms of each element are present. It's important that you know the basic prefixes. Mono, which is one. Di, which is two. Tri, which is three. Tetra, which is four. Penta, which is five. Hexa, which is six. Hepta, which is seven. Octa, which is eight. Nona, which is nine. And Deca, which is 10. Let's look at carbon and oxygen. They can be paired as CO and CO2. CO would be carbon monoxide. The prefix mono is added because there's one oxygen atom. For the first element, the mono isn't needed. If there's no prefix, it's assumed that there's only one atom. CO2 is called carbon dioxide because it has two atoms of oxygen, and di means two. You try with N2O4. Ready? You should have gone di-nitrogen tetraoxide. Di, as we went over, means two, and tetra is the prefix for four. The A at the end of tetra can be ignored, however, since it makes it easier to say, so di-nitrogen tetroxide would also work. All the prefixes ending in A can be shortened like this. It just depends on which element it's in front of. The good thing about prefixes in molecular compounds is that the name tells you exactly what's in the compound. That means you can work backwards a lot easier. If I need to find the chemical formula for carbon disulfide, I can easily tell it's CS2. Now you try. How would you write silicon hexabromide? Write your answer in the comments below. The last thing we're going to go over are the molecular compounds that contain hydrogen. These compounds have special names. A simple example is H2O, which we refer to as water. There isn't much of a trick to remember the names of these compounds, so it's really up to memorization. If you can't remember it, it's fine, because you can always just call it by its common name. For example, H2O could be referred to as dihydrogen monoxide. Come in. Hey, are you busy? No, I just finished recording a video. Okay, I just had some questions about naming molecular compounds. Oh, okay, perfect. I was just about to record the review, so we can do that now. Okay, so what's the difference between molecular and ionic compounds? Molecular compounds are usually made up of nonmetals, and ionic compounds are usually made up of one metal and one nonmetal. How are they named differently? Well, if they're binary, they don't have to be named differently. Oh, so you would write the name of the first element and the name of the last element with the ending change to IDE? Exactly. If certain elements can make up multiple compounds, you just have to add the appropriate prefix in front of each element so you know which compound it is. But you don't have to put mono in front of the first element if it only has one atom? Yep, only the second element. Finally, there's also certain elements that have special names that you would basically have to memorize. Oh, the ones with hydrogen in it. Yep, seems like you learned a lot from this video. Yeah, I guess. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. It might take some time to get used to naming compounds, but I promise it will get easier. Come back next week for part three of the naming compound series where we'll look at naming acids and bases. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe for more videos every week.